Hey guys, it's Dina, your Mindset Evolutionary here at Fly Nubian Queen, the network for melanated women. Um, I am Dina Jacobs, your Mindset Evolutionary, guiding black women to freedom from negative conditioning. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. We have a great topic to discuss. We're going to get into some transcendental meditation tonight. Um, and we're going to answer the question, and we're going to discuss... Is the black woman truly a god? I have contemplated this many, many times, right? So I have people piling in now. While we're waiting for people to come in, I want everyone to think about, is the black woman truly a god? Welcome, my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings. I'm so glad you're here with me tonight. Dina Jacobs, please join me every Sunday night at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern, that's 7 p.m. Pacific, and 10 p.m. Eastern here at Fly Nubian Queen on Facebook. And then you can catch the replay on YouTube. So wherever you're watching this, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up, the subscribe, the like, and most importantly, the share button for those who may be interested in um, joining the conversation or learning something from it if you're watching the pre-recorded version. Hello, my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings, my black women, and some of my guys who like to listen in and join in on the topic. Um, so let me check a couple of comments really quick. They're starting to come in fast. Continue to put them in. Is the black woman truly a god? Um, we're going to discuss transcendental meditation, prayer, and our concepts about how we see spirituality in relation to being a black woman, um, how some of us access it. And I know we have many different um, spiritual backgrounds, teachings, leanings, denominations, um, affiliations, and even a few people who probably consider themselves to be agnostic, uh, which is questioning not exactly sure, and or, and or atheists who just don't believe that there is a God at all. Um, so I welcome everyone to join me and every and all the other queens and kings that are here tonight in this discussion. This is a safe space for people to come and talk about ideas concerning the black community. So you know me, Dina Jacobs. I am guiding myself. I'm on a journey to free myself from the the chains of black inferiority from the negative conditioning that has put on, been put on me as a black woman raised here in America on the East Coast. And um, things that are, you know, because I live in this particular temple, in this body, and I do have melanated skin, and I am a woman, there are things that are unique that are common, and I mean, not unique, but are common amongst other women who share those attributes. But then there are things in my journey that are unique to me. So I just wanna make it clear as we begin to get into this conversation that these are my views and that these are obviously coming from my own personal experiences, which have formed my perspectives about what we're gonna talk about tonight. So if you have a different opinion or view based on your situation, that is welcomed here. And nothing that I say is going to uh, negate anything that's going on if you're in your life unless you choose for it to do that. It's all about personal choice. So let me see what the comments are saying so far. We have, let me see, five comments so far. And one of them is starting off with Calvin Bennett says, yes. I guess that's an answering the question, is a black woman truly a God? Dennis Brown said, God could not be as good as a black woman. Okay, Dennis, I see you. <laughs> um, Muhajid Jamal Ali says, salam, salute. Salam, salute to you, King. Um, Stephanie Payne says, hi, love, from good old England. Hey, cheerio. I know y'all don't say that, but I couldn't help myself. Hey, sweetie, how are you? Um, um, Beverly Wright said, hello. Um, hey, Beverly, glad to see you're here. Master Talu, we are all, we all are God. Don't you know that? Says Master Talu. Okay, well, let's get into it. That was the last comment so far. Um, so I'm going to share some of my personal story with you guys. So you hear it all the time, right? Posted on timelines, on t-shirts and conversations amongst ourselves. Even in our own minds, we have thought, you know, I'm a black woman. I'm a god. I'm a goddess. The black woman is God. The black man and woman, they're gods. We're gods on this earth. But what does that really mean? What does that really mean? So I'm going to pose that question again to my audience. 
what does it mean if if you guys are saying yes don't don't i know that already you know of course all that help me to understand from your your perspective what does that mean if you're saying that the black man and the black woman are god what does that mean to you and then we'll get into what it means to me so i see a few more comments popping in patrice morris says yes we are let's get to the next question though i appreciate you guys answering the first question absolutely but let's get into the second question what does that really mean if you believe yourself to be a god what does that mean to you black man black woman right let me see. I got a couple comments coming in. Patrice Morris says, know thyself. Know thyself is a command, right? It's a command that you give to yourself. Know thyself, right? So if you know thyself to be a God, what does that mean to you? Let's start to hear it. Come on, don't be shy. We all agree that we're gods and goddesses, right? Living on this earth, walking in flesh. What does that mean? Okay, so while we're while I'm waiting for some more comments to come in as you go, as you all contemplate that question, let's get into a little bit of spirituality. So this past week, I started Transcendental Meditation. And as many of you know, I am in therapy. I'm with a cognitive behavioral therapist. So basically, that means cognitive is in the mind, cognition, thoughts, how your cognition your thoughts control your behavior and it's kind of like where you see certain behaviors which create outcomes you're not getting the outcomes that you want in life so then you have to look at your behaviors and your behaviors stem from your thoughts so i'm seeing a therapist that is helping me to sort some of those things out right i started that um i want to say a couple two to three months ago um i also started seeing a holistic doctor who um, is, I'm in the middle of a cleanse. I'm two weeks into a uh, parasite and um, colon cleanse. And as a result, I can see some differences in my skin already. You guys might be able to notice it as well. Um, I'm much calmer. I feel lighter. I've lost a little weight. Um, I'm drinking alkaline water, all that, right? So I'm really taking a whole holistic approach to my journey of manifestation, manifesting my highest visions and dreams, right? And so I'm sharing that with you here, Dina Jacobs Alive on Sunday nights. And forgive me guys if I sound a little bit tongue-tied, I am in the midst of changing my uh, my teeth. So I'm getting used to, like I'm using Smile Direct. Um, so I'm getting used to, you know, the, how my teeth are sitting in my mouth. So please bear with me as I stumble through um, tonight's topic. So um, what does it really mean, right, to be a God? Because I have considered myself to be a God, right? Um, but it didn't just start recently. I have been thinking about myself this way ever since I started working with um, a rabbi. Like I had thought it before, just, you know, in talking and remember pro, poor righteous teachers. And I used to hang out with some five percenters back in the day. And, you know, they always talk about the black man and the woman. The black man is God and the woman is earth. And, this, 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 you know, and so they kind of schooled me on that as well. Right. So I always had a, a concept of feeling godlike as a black woman but what i couldn't reconcile is feeling godlike right and meaning that 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 you're in control of the universe in particular in control of your own personal universe but then grappling with disappointments loss failures um, and of course, the bigger thing that a lot of uh, black people struggle with is um, the institutions that have been put in place by white supremacy. So if I'm a goddess, if I'm a god, if the black man is God, then how did we end up in this situation? Is it self-imposed? Is it something that we are in the habit of? Is it habitual? Like what's going on here? How do we reconcile that? right so i've been on this journey i want to say it was back in 2010 um i happened to be in a coffee bean coffee shop here in los angeles and i was in a very jewish um, i would say probably orthodox jewish um neighborhood and there were two rabbis talking they had their uh shumashes out um they were you know 
discussing doctrine, I assume, because they were speaking in Hebrew. I did not understand. But something inside of me was like, I want to learn. I want to learn Judaism. I want to learn it from a Jew. And I'm interested to see, you know, if a rabbi would teach me. So I just went straight up to them and I said, hi, you know, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, we're studying, whatever. And I was like, I want to learn. And one of the rabbis looked at me and he said, do you really? And I said, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. I really want to learn um, about Judaism. Um, can you teach me? And he kind of looked at me and he was like, you know what? Are you interested? You're serious, right? And he was like, Give me a minute. So he went and he talked, you know, talked to his rabbi, finished up the, the, the conversation. He came back over to me and he said, you know, write down your name and your email address and I'll be in contact. Two weeks went by and or about a week went by and he emailed me. He was like, are you still interested? And I was like, absolutely. And he's like, OK, meet me at Aroma Cafe in Studio City on um, what time is good for you. Tuesdays, I think it was around noonish lunchtime. And we met and he was like, okay, I am going to teach you Judaism. And I was like, what? He didn't want any money or anything. Like I was like, well, how much is this gonna be? He was like, no, you wanna learn, I'm gonna teach you. And he was like, is this a good time for you? We're gonna start meeting on Tuesdays. And I mean, he legit started teaching me Judaism. I mean, it was like one of the most incredible experiences. And that is called ask and you shall receive. I had a thought in my mind that I want a rabbi to teach me Judaism. I don't want to just go out and get stuff on my own. I want to learn it from a uniquely Jew, uh, Orthodox Jewish perspective. And that was a really fascinating experience, people, because we were um, – having lunch and he you know he would always buy me lunch which was really um generous of him and he would teach me um philosophy and world you know their world view and he would also go over some of the scriptures with me so i just want to touch on a scripture and this scripture i don't um it's from corinthians so it's not necessarily from i don't know the bible that well so i'm going to be honest with you guys on that don't beat me to death christians just understand that we're talking about spirituality so i'm going to draw from a few different religions okay feel free to correct me by all means so again the question is is the black woman truly a god right so let me see what you guys answer to that sister lisa says we control our destiny all right, you're on to something, Sister Lisa. Um, Mujahid Jamal Ali says, there is a physical and spiritual connect connection. Absolutely. He also says, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Poor righteous teachers. Remember they had that song? <laughs> knowledge and wisdom, understanding. I used to love that. Um, wisdom, will, and love. Okay, that's also from Mujah. Mu is it Muhajid? Please help me pronounce that properly because I'm sure you're going to have more to say. Trish Mitchell says it means God dwells within us and his spirit guides us. Yes, I knew one of you was going to say it. Exactly, right? Perfect. Thank you. I'm going to get to the rest of your comments, but that is exactly what I wanted to touch on with 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have received from God, honor God with your body. And so that's, that's I think, um, 619 through, I think, like uh, 22 or something like that. Please feel free to look it up. Um, post it in the comments if you want to have it in there. Um, exactly. But I did post everything up as I usually do. I have some quotes up there and I have a link that we're going to watch in a little bit with Oprah talking about transcendental meditation um, and her experience. So if our bodies is the temple of the Holy Spirit that we've received from God, that's a piece of God that lives in us. So would we say that the answer to that question is yes? Black people are very spiritual people. We always have been. This happened way before we ever set foot on the continent of North America or anywhere beyond our homelands. 
we've always had a connection with the universe. You can see that in the pyramids. You can see that in the ancient Kemetic cultures and other cultures, not just in Kemet, right? Astrology was huge. Understanding the stars, understanding the heavens, understanding the universe, how the earth moved, how the placement, everything, understanding that we are a part of the bigger picture, that our spirit is housed inside of us, is a piece of God, that the body is a temple, right? If the body is a temple, right? And, and you know I like to get into semantics. So we think we know what the word body is, right? It's body obviously is flesh and bone organ right but if we take body is it as a is not a noun and take it as a verb according to google it is give material form to something abstract the body as a verb the meaning is to give material form to something abstract so if we're talking about giving material form to an abstraction the abstraction being the spirit, spirit being a piece of God, then absolutely the black woman is truly God, right? And of course, black men, this conversation is not really geared towards you. So please, we already know it's a given if the black woman is God, black men is God too, right? Okay, enough said. So one of the things I wanted to share with you that when I was meeting with Rabbi, on Tuesdays, he would drill into me two concepts. They're actually one concept, but it was a two-part concept. He would say, Dina, what is the purpose of life? And I knew to say back to him, the purpose of life is to self-create. And he was like, very good. And he was like, and who are you, Dina? And I would say, I am a co-creator with God. Now, these are concepts that he revealed to me because I had no concept that I was a co-creator with God. When I was practicing as a Christian, I thought that God was outside of me. I knew there was a spirit in me, but I didn't have the connection that I felt like God was up here and I was down here. And I just had like a little piece of, you know, life force that lived in me that, you know, it was kind of, you know, like I could tap in when I prayed, but during my day-to-day -day movements, me and God weren't necessarily connected. He shifted my entire paradigm by breaking down the levels and ways that people connect with God through their practices. And that was the thing that he stuck with me. He, he ingrained that in me. Every time we met, he would ask me that question. Dina, what is the purpose of life? And I would say, the purpose of life is to self-create. And he was like, and who are you? I am a co-creator with God. Co-creator, right? If you're thinking what the word co means, co means together, right? With something, right? So we're talking co-creator. Then he would say, you are created in what image? I am created in the image of God. And God is what? God is a creator, right? So if God is the creator of everything, and my body is the temple that houses the spirit of God, then yes, as a black woman, I am a God. And if you're looking at it from this Judaic perspective, I'm a co-creator with God. So that means that God and I are almost on the same level or on the same level, that he has imbued me with a piece of him, a piece of the spirit lives in me. And that spirit is the life force that drives me to create and manifest, right? So whatever is going on in your life, this is what I'm learning on my journey and I'm sharing it with you here at flynubianqueen.com and Fly Nubian um, on Facebook and YouTube. If you haven't already, please take a moment to like, give us the thumbs up, subscribe and share. Just take a moment right now, give us the thumbs up, subscribe, like and share this video. This conversation is deep. 
He shifted my paradigm. Now, we talked about paradigms before. What does a paradigm mean? It is a group of habits that are programmed into the subconscious mind. Habits are what? Actions, behaviors. Behaviors that are controlled by what? Thoughts that are live in your mind, right? So a paradigm is a group of habits that are programmed into the subconscious mind that control our behaviors. Your behaviors cause your results. The results together form the story of your life. Let that sink in. We say that we as black women are gods. And I believe that to be true. Through my many studies, I studied Buddhism, Nichiren Buddhism. I studied Judaism. Um, I studied a little bit of Hinduism. I've also studied, I've, I haven't gotten deep into Islam yet, but that is definitely on my list. I do know a little bit about it. And now I'm working on transcendental meditation. I'm in that process. I, I'm learning that and practicing that. And what I'm noticing is the thread that runs through is that connection of meditation, AKA prayer. Now in Islam, people pray or meditate five times a day. In Christianity, people pray whenever they want, typically over their meals, in the morning when they rise, usually before bed is a big time when people pray. In Transcendental Meditation, people pray twice a day. We meditate twice a day, morning and evening. Most religions, and of course, when I practice Buddhism, we chant it. And you can chant at any point in time that you feel like it, but they say you should at least chant once, uh, twice a day, right? That's also a form of meditation. So let's understand the semantics of things, right? Meditate is also, sometimes we say, someone will say, oh, blah, 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 blah. And we'll be like, hmm, I don't know about that. Let me meditate on it. Meditation is a verb and it means to think. Think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time in silence or with the aid of chanting for religious or spiritual purposes or as a method of relaxation. That's what Transcendental Meditation kind of focuses on. Relaxing, dropping down into your subconscious so that you can connect with the greater universal energy and spirit of energy, which brings about a calmness of mind and allows all the things that you are pressing down that are going on, trying to bubble up through you during the day to be released while you are in a state of relaxation in the mind, which then leads your body to relax so that you can come back to presence and focus and manifest things. It's the same thing with prayer, but they're just different methods to achieve the same thing. Prayer, meditation, they both are connecting you with the spirit. They're taking you out of, they're taking you first out of your mind, then out of your body and connecting you inside yourself, which then releases you to connect with the greater, larger spirit. So women, ladies, queens, what I'm saying to you right now is that if we believe that we are gods, then we should be doing things. Did I just say the word should? Okay, I'm not going to tell you what you should do. But if we are gods, if we truly believe that, I will present the question, are you connecting with your God spirit inside of you and the universal on a daily basis? If you are, how are you doing that? If we truly believe that we are gods, or as Rabbi put it, co-creators with gods, we're created in God's image, if you believe that. God is a creator, so what does that make us if we're created in his image? We are also creators. Black women are some of the most creative spirits and individuals on this earth, alongside black men. Black people are some of the most creative people on this earth. Most of the things that are being created now 
It's not new. It's imitation of things that have been created during antiquity, during ancient times by our ancestors. A lot of things are variations on a theme. And if you really look into who created a lot of the technological advances that are here today, you will find at the end of that line, at the end of that investigation, nine times out of 10, it is linked to a black man or woman. I was just watching something today on Dr. Cheryl Wade and how she was uh, one of the foremothers in inventing the GPS system. I didn't know that because she was working with NASA. Something we all use every day and let's just be real. I feel like I cannot live without here in the Los Angeles area is GPS created math mathematically in her mind as a black woman. She had to tap into her God spirit, her God energy that lived inside her temple. She had to drop down into herself tap into the universe to get the codes, to unlock that technology for the world. That's what it means to me. That's what it looks like to be a co-creator with God. It's to tap into that God energy inside yourself and manifest your vision, your highest visions and dreams. Understand, black woman, this is possible for you as an individual, for us as a collective community. If we are going to say casually that we are gods and goddesses or however you wanna say it, then we must own that from this day forward. Thank you guys for joining me, Dina Jacobs, live, your mindset evolutionary, guiding black women to freedom from negative conditioning of black inferiority here on Fly Nubian Queen on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Please give us the thumbs up, the like, the share, the subscribe, and please join me every Sunday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time and 10 p.m. Eastern time to discuss all kinds of topics like this where we really um, challenge ourselves to find ways to break free of black inferiority. We're breaking free of black inferiority complex. We're becoming the best that we can be. We're shifting our paradigms and we're manifesting a greater vision for ourselves as individuals, our family, our communities, and ultimately we know this will uplift the world right? We are the creators of this great country. We are the mothers of humanity. We are co-creators with God. So let me get into your comments as we're about halfway through our talk. Um, let me see what you guys have to say. I'm really excited um, to talk a little bit more about my experience with Transcendental Meditation. Um, but first, I'm going to let you hear a little bit from Oprah. But you guys are my priority at the moment, so let's see what you have to say. Um, Trish Mitchell says, it means God dwells within us and his spirit guides us. I think that's where I jumped off into Corinthians, where we talked about, do you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Okay, that's 1 Corinthians, and it starts at 619. And it also says, honor God with your body. Right. So that's something we can get into in another video, because I am practicing. Um, I'm about 98 percent vegan and I would love to share that with you because I'm taking a holistic approach to my freedom. I'm taking a very holistic approach to my freedom. And manifesting my visions and dreams. And I'm going to share that with you as well at a later time. Again, thank you for being here. If you haven't, um, take a moment to go over to flynubianmoney.com to uh, learn about how to invest, understand economics in this world stage. All of us should be doing that. I know I spoke about Riri earlier and how she just broke the mold and, and tore down Victoria's Secrets, their little prison labor business, um, shut down their whole like runway show. They're not even doing it anymore. They gave up. I mean, we should all 
get financially literate. So please go to flynubianmoney.com. And if you have a business idea, you could be the next Riri, okay? <laughs> so definitely go to flynubianbusiness.com and text the word Queens to 31996. That's 31996. Um, and if you would love to, if you want to interact with me personally, you can follow me on Insta at Dina, D E E N A Jacobs. That's Dina Jacobs flaunts on Instagram. Um, and yeah, I'm really glad you guys are here. So let me see some more comments. Sandy Yancey Smith says, no human is God. Metaphysically, we have God-like powers because our life forces are given by the universal God. Well, I appreciate your perspective on that, Sandy. And thank you for sharing. Some people feel that way. And that is totally fine. I am breaking free of certain limitations in my life. And so, you know, one of uh, the things that, you know, in Buddhism, they talk about it too, like, nirvana which is creating heaven on earth which is transcending into almost like a godlike state so to speak because when you get to nirvana you're in pure joy and i did experience pure joy when i was um the first time the very first time i began to meditate um in my practice of transcendental transcendental meditation so um you know everybody believes a little differently and sandy you are welcome to have that um perspective. Now for me, um, you're right. I agree with you in the sense that no human is God because God is so encompassing. We can't even like in this form, it, we can't even comprehend it. Right. Um, metaphysically we have God like powers. Okay. So again, I would agree with you because our life forces are given by the universal God. Now I don't look at it as it life force is being given, I look at life force existing in me so that I am vibrating in harmony with the universe and everyone else because we are all a piece of God, right? So um, that's kind of how I look at it. I don't know if that makes complete sense when I say it out loud, but it makes sense to me. Um, Kathy Upshear, if you can stretch forth the heaven, heavens alone and spread abroad the earth all by yourself, I guess you are. But I don't think so. I don't put myself on the level as God. I use that term exclusively for him. And you know what? You are entitled to do that. And I respect that, Kathy. Thank you for sharing. Beverly Wright says, in Christianity, we are created in the image of God. Therefore, we are God. Absolutely. That is, as you know, um, Judaism came first, then Christianity, then Islam. So um, there are different iterations, but one of the reasons I wanted to study Judaism and I wanted to study with a rabbi who was of the Orthodox um, uh, denomination is because I wanted to see it from their perspective. You know that they feel that they're the chosen people. And so I always wanted to know like, okay, where did I get that from? Why, you know, how are they coming to that conclusion? And once he gave me those paradigms, the new paradigms of how they think, right? That they don't see themselves as separate from God in the way that a lot of Christians or Muslims or other religions may, may see. They see themselves as co-creators that they're in unity, in harmony with God, that they are the chosen people because they are connected so closely with God that God created, we're, that they are created in God's image. So they don't have any intermediaries such as a Jesus Christ or something like that that's kind of in between, you know, them and God. They feel like they're right there with God creating the reality that they're experiencing on this earth. And there's something to be said for that. Um, you know, if you look at how things have worked out for their community over time, the purpose of life is to self-create according to what Rabbi taught me. The purpose of life is to self-create. I want you guys to meditate on that and um, let me know what you think that means. So Mujahid Ali, Jamal Ali says, linguistics and language understanding them is imperative for true and correct comprehension. Absolutely, that's why I always hit up some type of a definition so that we can make sure that we are at least on the same page for this conversation when we're using different words, right? Cecil Washington, donkeys can come from horses, but a horse cannot come from donkeys. LOL, sorry. Okay, Cecil, I'm going to need you to break that down a little bit deeper for me, hon. I, I'm, not, I'm not following. Um, I understand what you mean by that, but I don't know what that means in reference to what we're saying here. Are you saying that you explain to me. I don't want to try to guess, you know. Human beings matter mind. Um, 
That's from Muhajid. Muhajid Jamal Ali says, truth so set one free. Absolutely. Sister Lisa says, we are here to experience this particular plight to learn to use these experiences, increase our power. Okay, so um, it's all about the paradigm, right? It's all about the thoughts and beliefs that we hold in our subconscious mind, the habits that are programmed. And, and we are here to release ourselves from negative programming, negative conditioning. That's what Dina Jacobs Mindset Evolutionary is all about, releasing myself from negative conditioning that has been handed down from my four mothers and fathers. And we know that they were in a very negative situation during slavery that gave them not only physical slavery, but mental and spiritual slavery on a lot of levels. I have unlocked that for myself and I can see the difference in my life. I can see the difference in my health. I can see the difference in my perspective and how I take responsibility for things that happen in my life and how I um, am able to kind of pick and choose which things I'm going to give my focus, attention, energy, and spirit to. That has really helped me to grow and gain wisdom as a person, as a human, and be able to even sit here comfortably and share these things with you. Um, okay, so we have Majahid says, Igbo. Okay, is that who you are, your people? That's awesome. Master Tulu says, when you know yourself, then you know God, who God is. God is already in you. To know yourself, you have to work. Absolutely, that's part of the journey, right? Because when you come here, you have God in you, but you have to learn and discover that all over again on this journey. And some people do not. And some people get to a certain point and they stop. And then others transcend to higher and higher levels. And when, it's not, and when I'm talking about spirituality, this doesn't completely negate materialism because everything on earth was created, obviously, by God. And we're here, and he wants us to partake and enjoy and live, the best, live our best lives, as we like to say, right? So that's what we're here to do, is to manifest. And we manifest from the depths of our spirit in our subconscious mind, but sometimes there are things that have been planted into our subconscious mind, negative conditioning, that will create a barrier for our greatest purpose to break through into our conscious mind and then manifest into the physical. And that's what these videos are kind of working on, is how do we break through that negative condition? That's the challenge of life. That's the devil, the demons, Satan, you know, negative energy, spirits, whatever you want to call it, right? That is part of our experience here as humans. And yeah, I'm getting into the spiritual stuff, you know? It, it, you know, some people feel kind of weird about it because they don't believe, and that's okay. But you can still sit with us and listen to what we're saying and see if anything resonates with you. It may or may not. You can also put your comments there. If there are any atheists there, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Um, Danika Hines says, know thyself. Uche Ononye says, we were made in the image of God. And the Bible tells us in Psalms 82, 6, ye are gods. We're children of the most high. So I see that we have a lot of people here tonight who absolutely believe that. And that is awesome. Now, what are you going to do with it? I'm listening. What are you going to do with it, black man and black woman? Queens and kings, gods and goddess. What are we going to do with the information knowing that our bodies are the temple. A temple is a noun, is a building devoted to worship or regarded as the dwelling place of a god or gods or other objects of religious reverence. This is all according to Google. So we have a body, our body under a verb, used as a verb, give material form to something abstract. Our body gives material form to the spirit of God. The temple, our body is the temple. The temple is a noun. It's a building devoted to worship, regarded as, dwell, as the dwelling place. Black women, are we honoring and worshiping our bodies, our temples that house the spirit of God through the food that you eat, how you present yourself, your self-care? We've talked about that in these videos. Everything I talk about is leading up to you 
as an individual and us as a collective manifesting the greater vision that we have. We're going to manifest. We're going to co-create with God. We're going to realize these things that we have going on in the movement that are going to make us whole. We're going to reclaim our thrones here in America. How are we going to do that? By co-creating with God, the God within, connecting with the God without. That's why prayer and meditation are so important, especially in this day and age when we are bombarded with negative energy about who we are that tells us something different than who we know and feel in the depths of our souls we are. That's why we even go around saying, okay, queen, okay, goddess, you know, black woman is God. You know we gods. We create everything. We built this. We made this. We manifested this. Black girl magic. What are we talking about? We're talking about the God spirit. We're talking about the co-creators. We're talking about being the most creative people on this earth. We talk about us as the chosen people. I see myself as a chosen person, absolutely. I am living my purpose. That is me manifesting my particular energy. God, life force is manifesting through me and me living my purpose and being here on this journey with you. What is your purpose? Are you living it? If you're not, you're still co-creating with God. Everything we do is a co-creation with God. Every single thing that we do. Now, that can give meaning to some people to where their paradigm can shift because small things take on a greater significance in their life. But the small things make the bigger picture. Every stroke in a painting is important because it's going to lead to the bigger vision, right? So we're talking about things that we want, tangibles. We're talking about reparations. We're talking about our rightful place, reclaiming our throne. We're talking about black girl magic. We're talking about the achievements and bringing back the family. We're talking about raising the next generation of kings and queens. We're talking about um, health. We're talking about businesses. We're talking about nurturing. We're talking about so many different things, right? We're talking about self-love and self-care, right? We're talking about all these amazing things, our minds, our bodies, our spirits, our presence here on this earth. What we contribute just by merely being in this space as co-creators, as manifestations, as creations in the image of God. We can live up to that if we choose to. We can really, truly stop giving it lip service and start owning it. We can take a note like I did. I mean, again, everybody sees things the way they want to. But I had a calling within myself to connect with Jewish doctrine, teachings. And I studied for, I think, a little less than a year. Um, with Rabbi. He would travel sometimes to Israel, so we would have to take breaks. But every Tuesday we would meet, he would give me scriptures. He gave me a um, a shumash that I still have um, here. And we did some study in it in Genesis. So I wanted to have that experience to understand the base level of their belief system, which then became my belief system because it resonated with me. It felt right. The purpose of life is to self-create. For me to create self, I manifested in this form. I became a body. God manifested as the body of Dina, gave material form to something abstract. The temple, I now honor my temple by being a vegan, by taking time to meditate, by the self-care that I give, exercise, the spa days, taking care of my hair, all that, having, you know, having fun, enjoying my body, movement, respecting and honoring it in different ways, right? Um, when we talked about 
What is meditation? Meditation is a verb. It means to think deeply or focus one's mind for a period of time in silence, right? How many of us are taking that time for the mental space that we need to connect with God, the God within, which drops us into a space in the subconscious where we then become limitless as we connect with the greater God and we connect with each other. If our phones can sit in our hand with no cords or anything, and we can connect to all types of people all over the world, then absolutely that's just showing us and demonstrating to us who we are and what we can do as this is electric. We have electricity running through our bodies. Obviously, we can connect with the electricity of the universe, which is the power and another manifestation of God. If we really truly are going to say that we are gods, then by God, ladies, let's own this. Let's truly step into our greatness here. Let's get in touch with ourselves. Let's take time to meditate, sit in silence, start off with five to 10 minutes. Relax, breathe, and allow those negative thoughts, that negative conditioning to be released because that's what was happening for me during my transcendental meditation. I was taught during my transcendental meditation not to fight any thoughts that arose. Just allow them to come up without judgment. Feel whatever feeling is attached to them. Let them flow through you with no judgment. That's how you release the blocks to your subconscious that will break through so you can realize your purpose. That is the, the, one of the ways to free yourself from black inferiority. Let's get back into some comments. Oh, you know what? Before this is over, I have a, um, I want to let you guys listen to Oprah talk about uh, transcendental meditation. So we are going to get into that really quick. Okay. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. I want to read a few more comments before we go. So let's play. This is Oprah talking to Dr. Oz. The interview with the question uh, from you, that, you know, it's a classic Oprah question. So it stops you in your tracks. You have to think through it. You asked me, what do I need to do differently? How do I find that thread of inspiration in my life and take it where it needs to go next? Mm -hmm. So what's the answer for you? Mm -hmm. your so he's asking Oprah, how does she find that thread of inspiration to take her through? And I'm assuming that means through to the realization of it, right? How does she find that spark of inspiration? And this is where she's, this is what she leads into in answering that. What's your big plan? Well, the answer uh, may surprise, uh, I don't know if it'll surprise you or not. Um, for, for, for me, at this particular time in my life, I recognize that everything is about moving closer to that which is God. And without a full spiritual center, and I'm not talking about religion, I'm talking about without understanding the the, the, the fullness of from, from which you've come, you can't really fulfill your supreme moment of destiny. And I think everybody has a supreme moment of destiny. So what you've done and what you've been doing, and actually people have several supreme moments, some people do. So I think being connected to that which is greater than yourself, for me, at this particular time in my life, is the most important thing, and that's what I'm, I'm working on. Um, um, one of the things I did in next chapter, I went to visit a town uh, called TM Town, and it's in Fairfield, Iowa. Mm -hmm. Would you imagine that in Fairfield, Iowa, uh, it's a town population about 9,500, a third of the town meditates. Mm -hmm. So there's a traffic jam in Fairfield, Iowa at 530 <laughs> with mothers and doctors and dentists and lawyers and engineers and clerks and soccer moms all headed to the dome in Fairfield, Iowa, people who look just like you and me, and they're all there meditating. And in order to prepare for doing that show, um, I brought the Transcendental Meditations into Harpo Studios to teach me and my team how to meditate. So we started meditating, seven of us, 
seven led to 70, led to 270, led to now everybody in the company meditates. Nine o'clock in the morning, 4.30 in the afternoon, no matter what's going on, we stop, we meditate. And that way of being still with ourselves, coming back to the center. So she talked about a unity. It was a unifying spirit because when you meditate or when you pray, you're tapping into the greater universal energy, the God force, the life force. You're reconnecting that which is disconnected because we're never really disconnected, but you're, you're reconnecting that which is disconnected or, or compartmentalized into this physical form. You're releasing that energy to reconnect with the greater energy. So by her taking that with just seven people, they started to connect and then they released that energy out and it drew more people in who then connected the 70 and then it drew even more people in to the 200 people working at at her um harpo studios at the time to where it drew everybody in that worked for her twice a day imagine what can get done in our community if we were able to do something like that and recognizing that something is more important than you, it's more important than the work you're doing, it's more important, brings a kind of energy and, a, and, a, and, a, and, a, and an intensity of energy and intention that we've never had before. And you, you can't imagine what's happened in the company. People who used to have migraines don't, people are sleep, sleeping better, people have better relationships, people interact with other people better. It's been fantastic. So what, the one thing I want to continue to do is to center myself every day and make that a, 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 a practice for myself. Because so um, I cut it off right there, but again, you guys can go and watch the rest. It goes to um, for about another minute of her just, you know, talking about um, some of the things she's experienced with Transcendental Meditation very briefly. But I wanted to really share that with everyone because we can look to some of the people in our community. We may not agree with every single thing that they say or do. And you know, I have talked about that before, understanding that we are not perfect. No one is perfect, but there can be something learned, some wisdom gleaned from any person in every situation. No matter if they're all the way up here or they're all the way down here, you can learn something from a bum land on the street corner. They can teach you how not to end up in that situation. Or, you know, sometimes they even have some wisdom in other areas you wouldn't even believe. But not focusing there and focusing on those of our people who have manifested greatness of influence in the world, um, material wealth, um, business owner, um, all kinds of things you can attribute to Oprah. Then there's also things that people attribute to her negatively, right? But we're not here to focus on that. There's enough people on the internet focusing on what Oprah and all the people have done wrong. I'm here to shift our focus to see what can we learn from people like that who have transcended. And one of the things that she talks about is transcendental meditation or prayer. Stilling the mind, connecting with the higher power, making that a priority twice a day in your personal life, you will start to find and connect that there are others who will want to join you because you're going to send out an electric current that's going to let people know in your immediate circle that there's someone that's connecting, that wants to connect with me and for us to connect with the higher power. If we thought to do that in our community, like that one community in Iowa did, do you know what we could get done? It calms the spirit. It helps people to focus. It relieves anxiety. It uh, relaxes the body. So I noticed even for me, if I have pain, when I start to go into meditation, if I have any type of, you know, like locked up joints, it starts to release my body. Now, I, I meditate for 20 minutes at a time, um, but it releases your body. And then when I come out of it, I'm calm. I don't have the aches and pains. They're minimized, if not gone altogether. So this is a way that we can start to release some of that anxiety, let go of some of that negative conditioning, and really get 
focused on what it is that we are here to accomplish as individuals with our families, alongside our men, the community, and the greater world. Because Black people have a great purpose here. We know that. We built this, not just America, but really we gave a lot of um, knowledge, science, medicine, birth to the world. And it's time we reclaim our thrones, ladies and gentlemen who are here. So even if you're not a big believer or you're a Christian or whatever, whatever your, your situation is, don't limit yourself to just that thing. Like I understand you have a spiritual practice and you are welcomed. I am not trying to convert you over to, you know, being a Buddhist or a Judas or whatever. What I'm saying is you can pray as an as a Muslim, you can pray as a Christian, I can meditate, but we can start to bring ourselves together on that level. We can start to see where we can connect in that way. We're all doing the same things just about, just by slightly different practices and slightly different names. If you really step back and look at it, most religions have some form of prayer, AKA meditation. So what if we were able to connect across those barriers and find times in our community where we could come together where it's non-denominational and we can say, okay, we're gonna do it here at this time and we're gonna do it here at this time. And you can start within your own circle, do it with your own circle. If you have a bunch of Christian girlfriends and you feel more comfortable in that realm, do it that way. But we have to step up. If we're going to say that we're gods and we're goddesses, then let's command our personal space. Let's start owning it and co-creating with God. My experience with, with tra transcendental meditation was incredible. The first time I did it, within the first few seconds, I felt nothing but pure joy. I had a big smile on my face the entire time. There were thoughts that came up that um, could have been, if I was not meditating, bothersome or created anxiety in me, but I was able to just allow them to come up and dissipate. And afterwards, I felt so relaxed, not sleepy, yet I felt calm and focused, like, it's a weird thing because you think about focus and when you think about focus, you think about intensity, like, you know, like you got these rays of light coming out of your eyes, but it wasn't like that at all. It's like, I felt like I knew exactly what I needed to do. My mind was clear. I didn't have all these things distracting me and I was kind of like floating a little bit, like walking back to my car. I was just kind of like floating, like, I was like oh, this, you know what, this, this feels nice. You know, this feels good. I feel, I feel happy. I feel like anything is possible. I know exactly what I need to do when I get home. Traffic was clear on the way home. I mean, it was just like a beautiful experience. It shifted everything about um, my present moment. And that's the only time we're ever really creating is in the present moment. The past doesn't exist. The past is a memory or actually it's basically just your feelings, a connection to a feeling is the memories, right, of the past. The present is the only thing that really exists. The future is a projection. It's, a, it's in our imagination. Both of those live within our minds. So in the present is where we create. So meditation, prayer, whatever you call it, by whatever name, the rose still smells the same. We are physical material that gives form to the abstract spirit of God, the God energy. I want to leave you with that, but before I go, I want to tap into a couple more of your comments. So I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Mujahid says, all living things are bound by one cord. Absolutely. Um, let's see peace of mind. That's what prayer and meditation are supposed to do is give us moments to bring us peace of mind. If you're going into prayer worried, then you're not allowing yourself to drop down into your subconscious spirit 
which connects you to God that's going to that gives you the peace of mind and the clarity when you come back up to know what to do to move yourself forward out of negative situations. That's what meditation is about. That's what prayer is about. It's not about asking and begging. It's about tapping in to source energy and coming out with some clarity of how to move forward on manifesting your vision and your plan for your personal life as well as the community. Caroline Robinson says, I've been saying I'm going to do this, but my day just gets so busy. This is a reminder I have to do it. It's part of your self-care. It's a part of you loving you, Caroline. So what I do is within the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes of waking up, make sure you're fully awake. Um, matter of fact, let's say within the first half an hour, you get up, you use the bathroom, you have your drink of water. Don't drink any coffee or tea or anything like that because you don't want to be stimulated. You want to be in your natural state. And you just take a moment to, you know, sit on your couch or you don't want to necessarily sit back in bed because it might make you go to sleep or sit on your floor and just take some time to pray if that's what you do or meditate. No music, just to listen to the sounds that are around you and then start to breathe and, you know, just drop down into yourself. Those of us who practice vinyasa, flow yoga, we know all about the breathing, but it's not like you're trying to control your breathing. You're just allowing yourself to exist, if that makes sense, Carleen. Let me know how it goes if you do it. Um, Charles X. Moore says, yes, the black woman is a god. Yes, indeed. Um, Dorsey Dixon says, this has nothing to do with you, yet it has everything to do with you. Absolutely, Dorsey, you get it. Um, Mujahid says, levels. Yeah, there are levels to this. Merge with the great good spirit, he says. Love, truth, peace, freedom, justice. He's really feeling this. I'm glad. Dorsey Dixon says, remember, we are all we got as long as we keep the trash religion we continue we will continue to be a prisoner it's about transcending the religion understanding that it is a practice a practice in order to help us learn how to better connect with ourselves which ultimately leads to our connection with the creator we are co-creators with god the purpose of life is to self create to manifest the vision that you have and your purpose here on this earth, black man and black woman. Um, let's see. William Deloach says, Amen. Let's see. We have, who else is commenting? It seems like it's just Mujahid. <laughs> and I appreciate that he's so active. Thank you, brother. Um, any ladies? There we go. Ebony O'Neill. I want to transcend. I need to transcend. Baby girl, transcension is your birthright. So just Take a moment for yourself, Ebony. Take that moment in the morning and um, right before you do your nighttime ritual, before you wash up and get ready for bed, take your shower, whatever it is you do. Take, even if you start off small, like I said, five or 10 minutes just to sit quietly away from other people. Don't turn off the lights or anything, but you can dim them a little bit if you want. Burn some incense, some oils. And just breathe and just listen to yourself. And don't judge anything that comes up. That's how you release it, by not judging it. Because when you start judging it, imagine the thought is coming up and then you grab it and you start looking at it and judging it and it can't like it can't let go. The thought can't, it can't get out. So then you end up pushing it right back down and now you have anxiety when, and you're supposed to be meditating. So I hope that helps illustrate it. But Ebony O'Neill, this is for you. This message is for me, it's for you, it's for everyone here, but this is for you. Transcendence is your birthright. You can do that whenever you want. The creative power is in you. Um, indoctrination, says Mujahid. Um, you should all meet Noble Drew Ali. <laughs> Um, Sister Lisa says, I am also plant-based and free-form locked. This is a freedom journey. Yes, sister. Now, I'm not locked, okay? I do my little, you know, I like to change my hair quite a bit. But I feel you. I feel you on that. You know what I'm saying? Plant-based is really the way to go, people, because 
it is going to free you from the slavery of the body. Like your body will become beholden to you versus you being beholden to all those cravings and those illnesses. And your body is like telling you that, you know, it's dying and a slow, painful death. Once you let go of some of the um, processed foods and things like that, you're going to feel so much better and your mind is going to be clearer because you're not going to be, your body and your spirit is not going to be focused on trying to combat all the toxicity that's building up in your, in your temple. Um, Veronica Bice says, good evening, just tuning in. You can always go back and watch it from the beginning, love. Peace to the gods and the earth. Okay, um, we got a camel up here. What does that mean? <laughs> Purify the body with water and the heart with love. Absolutely. This is part of loving yourself, people. Having some practice of spirituality and connecting with the greater is loving yourself. And so I've talked enough tonight. I want to say thank you guys so much for joining me, Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary here um, on Fly Moving Queen on Facebook and YouTube. If you haven't already, please give us the thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share this message with those who need to hear it. Yes, the black woman truly is a god. It's just time that we tap into it, right? It's time for us to transcend this earthly plane. It's time for us to transcend our physical realm and connect with the creator so that we can understand our true purpose here right i'm dina jacobs live here on sunday nights at 7 p.m pacific time 10 p.m eastern time guiding black women to freedom from negative conditioning know that i love you and i'm so happy that you're joining me on my journey to freedom from negative conditioning. Have a wonderful night.